Hey guys, so I've been doing my best to actually, you know, do my best to make videos and do my job, <laughs> but it's been really hard because of a little indie game that's been consuming every waking moment of my time. You might have heard of it, it's called Boulder's Gate 3, I know, it's pretty abstract. <laughs> more likely than not though, I'm going to make a video about that too on the second channel, so check that out if you want more casual, kind of just like freeform content, but as of right now, the game is just amazing and i just got to what seems like the main villain introduction and of course spoilers for Baldur's gate 3 if you haven't played it but kethrick thorm's entrance is really really cool <laughs> one of the better villain entrances that i've seen in a while personally the best part of the whole scene at least for me was when he pulled an axe from his chest dropped it in front of a goblin and then commanded that goblin to strike him again just to see if he could kill him it's it's just a completely boss move. But then I started thinking to myself, as awesome as this moment was, it seemed really familiar. <laughs> and that's when I realized the exact same thing happens with another fantastic villain intro. You guys might have seen it. Pick it up. Pick it up. <sighs> yeah, so the wolf in Puss in Boots commands Puss to pick it up, and everything about the scene from the music to the direction to the visuals makes it so weighty. General Thorm and the wolf are obviously very different characters, but the similarities in not only their entrances, but the effective nature of them got me thinking. What makes an effective villain entrance? What qualities need to appear or be avoided in order to craft a scene that can really grip an audience or a reader in the same way that iconic villains have gripped us in the past? Well, luckily, since I'm a novel and script editor, it's not only my passion, but my literal job to answer these kinds of questions. If you are a writer who's hoping to make fantastic villain entrances, I'm going to use some famous villain entrances that we all know to break down the process into four primary steps. All of this is going to seem really simple on its face though, but trust me, many fictions fail at this over and over again, as you all have probably seen. The very first thing that we are going to have to settle is showing versus telling, because each of the four steps is based in the execution of showing. Now, I really don't like the term show don't tell, because I don't think it's very descriptive or helpful to new writers. What I like to substitute that for clients is demonstrate, don't describe. The reason I say this is because most often, the best ways to educate your audience about your character traits, qualities, or backgrounds isn't through describing these things with words, it's through demonstrating these things with actions. And it works the same way with villain intros. Instead of having a character describe the villain's threat or power or ruthless nature, have the villain demonstrate those things through actions. Demonstrate don't describe. Even in villain introduction scenes where the villain can't engage in combat or kill a bunch of people, you can still demonstrate the qualities that make them dangerous. Take Tywin Lannister's introduction from Game of Thrones. Even though his intro is almost entirely just talking, we are given a demonstration of just how fearsome he is through his actions. He is skinning and gutting a stag by himself, the symbol of the royal family. It's a demonstration that he is willing to get his hands dirty himself, that he's a killer, and that he takes control. Tywin could have easily just been, like, sitting in a chair talking about how great he was, describing it, but instead, in his intro, it's demonstrated. I cannot stress this enough, really. Demonstrating, not describing the villain's qualities is the key to everything we're about to discuss, and it's the secret sauce that makes everything work. Now. To actually get to our first step for an iconic villain intro, it is to demonstrate the power and skill of the villain. This is so that the audience has an understanding of why they should be respected as a villain at all. This is probably the most simple step into creating an iconic villain entrance. Something that I think works well here as an example is Thanos' entrance in Infinity War. His power and skill is shown by him beating the piss out of the Hulk something that the audience understands is insanely impressive. 
right from the get-go, a villain whose introduction includes a proper demonstration of the power and skill they wield creates an air of tension that hangs over the rest of the narrative. Next comes the second step, which seems simple on the surface but has a surprising bit of nuance to it. You want to demonstrate the villain's unique aspect. That being, what interesting character concept do they have that an audience can be invested in and see their power through. Now, some of you may be asking, well, how is this different from the villain showing their skill, right? Isn't the villain showing their power during the intro also the villain being unique? Well, this is where the nuance comes in, because the answer is just no. Just because a villain entrance has them displaying their skills does not mean that their skills are unique. In the same way that a main character has a unique aspect that validates their position as the protagonist, so too should the villain have a unique aspect that validates their position as the antagonist. Kung Fu Panda 2's villain entrance is a great example of this. Shen battles the masters and holds his own, but this is not really unique in any way. They all are using martial arts. In fact, he even admits that he does not have the skills necessary to defeat them. However, what is unique about Shen's skills is him commanding a cannon of explosives, like he's the only one that, that has it. This is what differentiates Shen from the other characters in the series. In the same way that a protagonist usually has a special skill, so too does the villain, and it's sometimes best shown within their introductions. As an example of where the villain shows their skill but doesn't show a unique trait, it's Killmonger actually from Black Panther. Of course, his unique trait is that he is a Wakandan-like member of royalty, but that doesn't come into play here, so his intro, while cool, isn't iconic or super memorable. Instead, his unique feature is saved for a later, bigger payoff. As a final note to this second step, sometimes the demonstration of a villain's unique aspect fulfills the need of them showing their skill. They can be one and the same. Basically, almost all unique aspects demonstrate skills, but not all skills demonstrate a unique aspect. Now, the third step in creating an iconic, grabbing villain intro is a sneaky one that most people might not think about. You want to demonstrate the villain succeeding in their intro. What does this accomplish? Well, it kind of comes down to a choice between binaries, really. If a villain's introduction shows them failing or getting beaten, an audience or reader may not take that villain very seriously. As a quick note, this could actually be used to a writer's favor, especially if they want a villain to be seen as unserious at the beginning. This is what happened to Spot in Spider-Verse, who failed clumsily in his introduction, but became more serious and threatening as the narrative progressed. The opposite end of this is to show the villain succeeding, though. If the villain enters the narrative being successful, effective, and deliberate, the audience will see how the previously shown skills and unique aspects can be wielded down the line. This is why so many fictions introduce their villains performing a crime or some other type of antagonism. One of the best examples of this that I can think of is the Joker from The Dark Knight. He demonstrates his skills and unique aspects while successfully robbing a bank in broad daylight. It's a great villain intro because we get a sense of just how dangerous the character is. The last point I will make to this is that if your villain is facing your protagonist in their introduction, they should be successful, but they shouldn't like outright win. This is because, obviously, if the villain wins here and kills the hero, there wouldn't be a story. Usually, these instances show the villain besting the hero, but then the hero gets away to fight another day. You'll see what I mean later with some examples. And finally, and maybe the most important one, is our fourth step and that is demonstrating how the villain wields fear. This is the icing on the top of the cake that makes the difference with fantastic villain intros. As an audience or reader, we take cues on how we should feel based on the reactions of the characters within the fictions. Their response to other characters shapes our response to what we see. So if we see our characters that we care about in fear of the villain, we then start to fear the villain and what they are capable of. An amazing example of this is from Puss in Boots. Even though this is an animated movie aimed at kids, the fear the wolf creates in Puss is palpable and changes the entire tone of the narrative. We get a first-hand sense of the intimidation the villain brings and become more invested in our protagonist's struggle because of it. I 
I just love the smell of fear. These four steps, demonstrating the villain's power and skill, demonstrating the villain's unique aspect, demonstrating the villain succeeding, and demonstrating how the villain wields fear are the fundamental basics to making a great villain intro. And just so you guys can really see what I'm talking about here, we can end this video by going over multiple iconic villain intro scenes to show how they each use these aspects. Syndrome's intro demonstrates unique aspects, which is also his skill, demonstrates his success, but doesn't win completely, he doesn't kill Mr. Incredible, and demonstrates the fear he causes, we can see it on Mr. Incredible's face. Grievous demonstrates his skill, which is lightsabers, demonstrates his unique aspect, like lightsabers with his feet, <laughs> demonstrates his success, but doesn't win completely, some of the Jedi get away, and demonstrates the fear he causes. Again, we can see how terrified the Jedi are. Joker demonstrates his skill, demonstrates his unique aspect with being able to plan and pull off this whole heist, demonstrates his success, he gets away, and shows the fear he causes. Thanos shows his skill, he beats the Hulk, shows his unique aspect, he has the Infinity Gauntlet, shows his success but doesn't win completely, all the heroes don't die, and shows the fear he causes. Thorm demonstrates his skill, freaking kills a goblin with his bare hands, demonstrates his unique aspect, he can't die, <laughs> demonstrates his success, and demonstrates the fear he causes. The Wolf demonstrates his skill, demonstrates his unique aspect, demonstrates his success but doesn't win completely, and demonstrates the fear he causes. Combustion Man demonstrates his unique aspect, which is also his skill, combustion bending, demonstrates his success but doesn't win completely and gets away, and demonstrates the fear he causes. <laughs> like I said, these qualities are present in many, if not most, of the great villain entrances out there. Are there great villain intros without these aspects? I'm sure, probably. <laughs> I stand by the fact that writing is fluid and can be executed in a variety of ways. But if you wanted to introduce your own villain in a way that would grab people instantly, now hopefully you have the know-how to do that. Anyway, thanks for watching all the way until the end. If you like what you heard, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you really want to be a homie, check out my website for editing services and my books, or check out my Patreon if you want some cool perks. As always, it was a pleasure, and I'll talk to you all again soon.